Legend of Total War here, and today we're going to be going through the Total War Warhammer 3 roadmap for 2022. Uh, there's a lot of things to discuss with this, and uh, there's this PDF here that I'm looking at, so I've been given a little bit of early access by Creative Assembly, and so have a lot of other creators. Um, there's a lot of things to unpack, but there's also some stuff in here that I'm going to gloss over because I just don't think it's important. So what I'm going to do is leave a uh, link in the description. Um, which I probably have to put in after the, the video launches because it'll be launching at the same time as the website goes up and the website usually um, has a 404 error so we'll see how that goes but yeah I'll try to update that as quickly as I can so you guys can read on what you find interesting to yourself but I think there's a lot of stuff in this that is just fluff and I'm mostly just going to gloss over it. Now, before we start talking about the, the actual content that is to come with the roadmap, I think it's a good opportunity to touch base and see where is Total War Warhammer 3 now and what's going right and what's going wrong. All right. I think um, in terms of the community, uh, the ideal place to be right now is it's, if you enjoy Total War Warhammer 3, if you just enjoy it, stay off forums. Stay off the forums, stay off the internet, just play it. Don't interact with the wider community because there is so much negativity now as a public figure i can't do that i have to keep making videos so i'm going to be forced to interact with it but it's not not interesting or pleasant to to read this stuff like i get reddit links sent to me all the time and uh, i try to stay off the reddit as much as possible now because it's not really a fun place to be but i have seen that the reddit is even if which is normally a uh, pretty pro creative assembly place um, is now starting to make fun of Creative Assembly. So that's really gives you an idea of how things have fallen. Basically, the community is not in a good state. Last time I saw it like this was, it's probably worse than what it was with Thrones of Britannia. This is, this is close to Rome 2 level. I feel like Rome 2 was worse, but not by much. And also, I think that the Rome 2 stuff was fixed a lot quicker than this. Anyway, another thing to have a look at is where, what are the players doing? Let's have a look at Total War Warhammer 2. Because Warhammer 3 is mainly main job is to be better than Warhammer 2, right? So you've got Warhammer 2, it's got 8,099 people playing it. Then you have a look at Warhammer 3, and you've got 7,565 people playing it. So Warhammer 2 currently has about 500 more players than Warhammer 3. Now, I've been monitoring this consistently over the like various different times, um, and it seems like at all times, Warhammer 2 has more players than Warhammer 3. Um, the variation of, uh, of players seems to vary between on its peak on weekends at about 14,000 and its lowest points at like Tuesday, Wednesday at 4,500. Now, at no point in Warhammer 2's life cycle did the player base fall that low at absolutely no point. So Warhammer 3 is having a very rough time, at least compared to Warhammer 2. But Warhammer 2 had a, had a relatively good time i think because uh the the expectations on warhammer 2 i think were fairly low and it just exceeded those expectations and lifted the bar now the thing is it lifted the bar and expected that warhammer 3 continue along those lines and warhammer 3 did not fall uh, it fell way short of those expectations i think and um that's that's i think the crux of why warhammer 3 has been so poorly received it's not a bad game on its own it's a bad game in comparison to what has is already available we already have a better warhammer experience in warhammer 2 see warhammer 2 exceeded warhammer 1 in terms of uh, what was available and what you could do just even from the launch because from the launch uh, from the very end of warhammer 1 it wasn't really that good of a game and uh, even with the the starting eight legendary lords this added a lot to it um and then immortal empire sorry mortal empires came out uh, pretty quickly and this one here is just dragging its heels now obviously COVID has uh, some part to play in that but when you see other developers doing a lot better of a job you gotta wonder what is going on with creative assembly because they're not only being slow they're also making bad and uh, just making bad decisions and uh poor gameplay design choices so it's not you can't just blame entirely on uh, COVID with that anyway so things aren't good with Warhammer 3 and it's Creative Assembly's job to try to get people back into the game and I, I want to try to help with that um, as much as possible because nobody's rooting for Warhammer 3 to succeed more than me and it's also important to note that Warhammer 3 will not succeed by being a sycophant by just accept like by praising something 
for being great, even when it's not great, that makes you a sycophant, and that's not helpful at all. Okay, you'll end up with a smaller and smaller player base, and the game will die. So even if you are enjoying Warhammer 3, and I'm glad that if you are enjoying it, that you are enjoying it, um, it's really important to note that this game has major, major problems. They need to be addressed. Otherwise, you know, this game may not have as long of a, of a life that it otherwise could have. Um, anyway, so looking at Q2, um, so that's where we're currently in. We're in April at the moment. There was nothing in April, um, and uh, the 1.2 update isn't scheduled for it, so that's going to be in May. Uh, following our massive 1.1 update, blah, 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 blah. Um, I would not uh, say that 1.1 was massive. Um, it was big in terms of, like, patch notes, but that's because it did a lot of little things. And a lot of the little things were just, like, changing values of units. That's not massive. Like... The an example of a massive update is, for for example, Warhammer Two was when they completely overhauled the um, the turn time and like reduced it by like half. That was a massive update. You know, making significant improvements in their code and Im improvements in the campaign, that kind of stuff. Th those are massive updates. What they did in 1.1 was put band-aids down at best. They put in so that the protection chain building could essentially stop the rifts from spawning. That's a band-aid, right? Because the rifts are a primary campaign mechanic. And they tried to make it less punishing to play the Realm of Chaos. But even, I've played some games of Warhammer 3 since then. I still don't want to finish a campaign of Warhammer 3. It's just not fun. It doesn't address the core issues. So to call it massive, I think, is a bit of a fail. I think... Creative Assembly is very good at putting a positive spin on what they're doing and the state of things. But at the same time, I would really appreciate it if they would be a little bit more honest and a little bit more transparent and a little bit more down to earth. It does feel like they have their head in the clouds, at least when they're making these kind of posts. Now, obviously, they're not going to put posts in like, we're so sorry, we fucked up. We're the worst. Um, yeah, the, the coding is completely all over the place. It's a complete mess. They're not going to write that kind of stuff in, even if it's true, obviously. But there's got to be a happy medium. It can't just be super positive or super negative. You've got to take some responsibility for your actions here, Creative Assembly, because you haven't yet. Uh, and I think that's the problem. You can't get people to forgive you unless you ask for that forgiveness or become worthy of it. Um, trust me, I know a little bit about that. You can't just wait and bury your head in the sand and be like, people will forget eventually. No, they won't forget, because even to this day, people don't forget about Rome too. okay? You've got to take some responsibility for your actions, or lack thereof. Anyway, update 1.2 scheduled for May. Later next month, we'll be bringing you update 1.2. As it's only been a few months since the game's launch, what does that mean? As it's only been a few months since the game launch, is that trying to make excuses for the fact that you've done nothing since then? Uh, May's release will continue to focus on... See, you could have just cut that out. You could just cut that out. Just be like, May's release will continue to focus on implementing fixes for community reported issues while improving areas of the game where both players and devs team would like to see tweaks. Yeah, this bit here is bullshit. Just cut it out. <laughs> just cut that shit out. Because what that does, it tries to soften your expectations. Hey guys, look, it hasn't been that long, okay? So what if we've done nothing, okay? Just get rid of that language, stop trying to make excuses for being shit, okay? Stop making excuses. Because that's what happened with the, the Future of Three Kingdoms video, right? You made excuses and been like, we finished our content. And everybody saw right the fuck through it, right? And if you had just been honest in the first place and said, look... We're just done with this. We're just moving on. People would have been like, yeah, right. For the most part, you would have gotten some pushback, but not as much. When you try to pull the wool over people's eyes and they see right through it, it clear it's clear that you don't respect the audience and the demographic, but you're, you're trying to trick them into thinking that, um, that they shouldn't expect better. They absolutely should expect better. Absolutely. Anyway. Uh, with May rapidly approaching, we are working hard on several key issues that we're looking to include with this release. So yeah, this is some of the stuff I'm going to gloss over a bit, some of the things. AI factions rebuild too quickly. This is an important one because they they do cheat in this regard. They just bypass the demolish queues and start building straight away. And also, when they rebuild a tower, sometimes you can attack it, sometimes you can't while it's being built. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a few weird things going on with that. Issues when flying units attack ground units. Yep, um, I've seen that. Range units. I think they fixed this one for the most part in 1.1. .1. I don't think that's a major issue, but whatever. Demon factions automatically declare one slash vassals. Yeah, that's a big issue. This is one that I want to talk about a little bit. So this also affects Nakai's campaign a great deal. Uh, one of the big problems with vassals 
uh, apart from, you know, automatically declaring War on Slash Vassals, is where if you're playing as Nakai, because Immortal Empires is coming soon-ish, um, and people will be playing Nakai again, maybe, um, Nakai's big problem is that he has to create Vassal. He has to create the, the Vassal. And then if you want to engage in diplomacy with, say, the Empire and becomes friend with them, it can be a bit useless because you can get plus 200 relations, get a military alliance with them, be super friendly, have all the same enemies, and then be doing something else, not invading them, and then their relationship with your Vassal will be crap because the Vassal will have a lot of territory but no armies, and so Reichland will see them as easy target. They won't check to see that that it'll break their defensive alliance or military alliance with you, they'll declare war on your vassal, in which case you have no choice but to accept, so you end up at war with somebody who was a friend simply because of a stupid oversight, which has been fixed in other Total War games, and Rome 2 and Attila, I'm fairly sure, uh, you can't directly declare war on somebody's vassal, and it's an easy, easy fix as well. Just make it so that if anyone's a vassal, they are only affected by war declarations from their overlord, and that, like, you just can't declare war on, or join war against them, um, by, 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 without primarily attacking their overlord. So in that case there, that Reichland would have had to declare war on, on, um, what are they called? On, uh, Nakai himself, which probably wouldn't have happened. And, uh, Nakari will just suffer from that exact same problem. So if they can manage to fix that, that would be good. Uh, fix the issues that result in players getting stuck in the Sinatra room. Yeah, I've seen that. That's annoying. Heavy units getting, uh, units ignored, defensive infantry lines. Yeah, there's a lot of mass issue, especially with, like, stone horns. Having a melee infantry line trying to hold onto that is pointless. They just run right past it. Just useless. They've just got so much mass. Uh, AI factions with anti-player bias. Yeah, that's that comes down to difficulty. Um, and you can reduce that a bit on lower difficulties. But yeah, a, an example of this is when you play as uh, Zhao Ming. Um, Miao Ying will get wiped out pretty much straight away because she is friendly with you right off the bat. And because she's friendly with you, she loses all of her cheats. And then all of the enemy factions just roll in and kill her really quickly because she's on the front of their line. Uh, whereas if you play as Sinch, Miao Ying becomes a mega power very quickly. Um, so whichever factions like you, uh, they lose all their cheats. And whichever factions hate you, they get mega cheats, making allies practically worthless. Um, so there's big problems there with anti-player bias in terms of just making the game fun. Uh, but that is one way to make the game more challenging, for sure. Anyway, uh, Snow is too bright. Yes, it is. Auto resolve improvements, yeah, that would be good because the big problem with auto resolve at the moment is it doesn't make the game more challenging, it makes the game more tedious because you've got armies that are super strong that have to fight the battle manually, just waste like 5 10 minutes because auto resolve said it would be a pyrrhic victory otherwise, then you go into the battle and take no casualties. So this adds to campaign fatigue. So people end up abandoning their campaign a lot earlier because one thing I think that Creative Assembly did not take into consideration is respect for players' time, okay? People oftentimes don't have 12 hours a day to play, like I might, for example, right? Some people might only get an hour a day to play. And imagine if that hour was spent fighting minor city battles against like four units when you've got a doom stack. And that was their hour for the day done. It increases fatigue, and then that's it. They're just done with the campaign. They're going to go play a game where they can actually get more done. And that's the big problem here. You want to make sure that the player can get as much done as possible without adding extreme tedium. Uh, that's where streamlining can be very helpful. And the thing is, having it so that you fight every single battle manually is, um, or forced to be fought every battle manually, it's just, it's not a fun thing. And if somebody wants to fight every single battle manually, there's nothing stopping them from doing that if the auto-resolve wasn't that punishing. But definitely you shouldn't make it so that it's like Warhammer 1, where you just auto-resolve every single battle. There has to be a happy medium. Uh, you can't have it where you can't auto-resolve anything, and you can't have it where you can auto-resolve everything. It should be, you can auto-resolve the easy stuff and the super difficult stuff. Like, you're never going to win that. And you should make it so that the battles that are in between that are incentivized to fight manually. Anyway, improvements to unit responsiveness. Yeah, that's always a plus. Improvements to single entity units dealing with other single entity units. Yeah, yeah, that th that's uh, that would be an improvement. That's always been a problem in in Warhammer, but it's definitely pronounced in Warhammer Three. It's mainly mainly I think due to units knocking down um, heroes on the ground because. A lot, of, a lot of times they'll make an attack and they'll knock it down and they just won't dish out any damage. They need to wait a second to get them back up. And oftentimes they'll just keep walking in front of them and just knock them down again. So it can be very frustrating when you need to kill someone quickly and they're just goofing around um, because they're 
detection this is really bad technology tree reworks this is an important one because like if you take corn and ogre kingdoms for example they've got really good tech trees you know meaningful impactful stuff in there that makes a big difference to the campaign and then you have a look at nurgle and slanesh and it's like bare bones nothing indicates to me that these were made by different teams or different people and that the teams weren't communicating now here's the thing Warhammer 3 was mostly made during covid so a lot of people were working from home understandable but there's this thing called discord and you know emails they should have been communicating with each other it really feels like there is a big secrecy problem with creative assembly that that uh they need to keep all of their their tools a secret they don't they didn't want us to know about the realms of chaos before launch they didn't want us to know about this they didn't want us to know about that they keep all their secrets and the problem with that is that it, it generates hype but it also means that it could be a complete piece of crap mechanic because it hasn't been uh, like peer reviewed. And that is really the crux of what went wrong with Warhammer 3. It was just not peer reviewed. People did not get a chance to look at it, assess it, and make the adjustments that needed to be made. They were set on stone what they wanted to do, and then that was it. And whatever worked was great, and whatever didn't work, we're stuck with. It's super annoying. And yeah, the technology tree is an indication of that as well. Same thing with the character trait rework. I mean, what have, what have they done for my, my boy Knowledgeable? Like, why, why would you do that? Knowledgeable has knowledgeable been destroyed. Maybe they'll bring that back. Maybe. Who knows? I doubt it. And then there's other traits uh, that are too strong. Now, I would say to Creative Assembly that if you want to bring people back to the game, forget about balance and think more about fun. Um, the overpowered traits are fine. They're not- I don't think anyone gets an overpowered trait and is like, Oh, what is this shit? Unbreakable for all units in my army. Uninstall the game. No, that's- that's not likely- I don't think that's likely to happen. Maybe it happens in rare occasions. But when people get like a purple item, it's like, Plus one melee attacks! It's like, that's a piece of shit! It's the same thing that you get when you finish the campaign and you get Bellacor and just like, What is this crap? It's like, he's a generic lord, essentially. He doesn't- he doesn't have an interesting skill tree. You know, make it more interesting. And some of the, the the powerful caravan traits are interesting. And then you've got like Farta for the Ogre Kingdoms, where it's like a unique Ogre Kingdoms trait that provides 4% extra speed. Whereas you could get a generic trait, um, Fleet Footed, which is like 15% plus Strider. It's like, they're not communicating, they didn't check these sort of things. Um, but yeah, they, they definitely need to have a look at this stuff here, because traits are interesting. Um, if they're done well. Also, they should have a look at is the defeat traits. I don't think that's what they mean here. Uh, some of the defeat traits are boring as fuck. Like, Katarin's defeat trait. Oh, terror when fighting against Kislev. Boring! That's boring. Most most lords will already have terror in some way or form. Especially demons. Right, so, it's stupid. Um, and then you've got you know, good ones like Isabella's trait. Where it's like, people especially me, will form their entire fucking strategy around farming that trait, giving you more gameplay options. So, you know, giving that overpowered stuff that's difficult to achieve uh, can be very interesting. Uh, Cinch and Slanesh replenish rates, yeah, so that's pretty obvious that uh, Cinch and Slanesh have nothing in their skill trees or tech trees or their heroes that increase replenishment rates and so they end up with uh, they have to stay in green territories constantly or else they they have to replace their units which is not what you want to be doing whereas if you look at Kislev they have uh, and Ogre Kingdoms they've got heroes that can be attached they've got tech trees they've got lord skills they've got everything they need to get to like 40-50% replenishment rate and Cinch is like lucky if he gets 5% especially if you also get that uh, cur uh, what's it called? Corrupted by Nurgle trait, which reduces replenishment rate. Then there's a leaderboard reset, just gonna gloss over that, don't care. Okay, also with this update, you get Regiments of Renown 1. Now, what that means is that, um, every, every race in Game 3 will be given one Regiment of Renown. If you're not familiar with the Regiment of Renown, they think of it like a mercenary unit that you can recruit instantly. That's kind of a, a slight improvement over, uh, an existing unit. So, let's just say a Regiment of Renown, um, Kossar unit, or a Regiment of Renown Ice Guard, that starts at 9 experience and has, like, one special ability. Um, usually not super overpowered, but sometimes you get a Regiment of Renown like the, um, the Avalanche Launchers for the, sc uh, for the uh, Skaven, which is a Regiment of Renown, um, 
what's it called? Poison Wind Mortar, but it's like super bloody powerful. It's like 10 times more powerful than an uh, original one because it's just super good. Um, so they do vary in quality. Now, with each of the game's core races, that could mean either 7 or 8 because you've got to keep in mind that the Legion of Chaos does not have a unique um, roster. They just borrow from the other Chaos Gods. So either they'll get all four of the other Chaos Gods regiments of renown, or they'll get a unique one that's just for them. So they'll either get seven or eight Regiment of Renown with that pack. Anyway, that's all there is for um, for Q2. And by the way, that is the first bit of added content to uh, Warhammer 3 since launch. That's three months after it's come out. You know, if you think that's acceptable, that's great. I, I think that there's something going wrong there. And then we move on to July and August. Okay, update 1.3. Uh, following update 1.2, we have one last regular update before moving on to our next major release, major game release. So, I think what they mean by that is is Immortal Empires is down here. Um, not a new game is coming out, so I think that that could be misinterpreted different ways there. Um, obviously, looking at uh, the update beyond an update um, is a bit pointless because this update here, based on what the, I've, I've actually seen some of the patch notes, I think it's going to fall really flat. Um, I saw the patch notes and I just thought it was just boring, so I don't think it's going to do a bloody thing. Um, but there's some stuff in here that wasn't mentioned in that update, so maybe maybe they will actually make it a bit more interesting. Hard to say at this stage here. But yeah, if that doesn't meet their expectations, then a lot of the stuff here will be uh, addressed. Now, um, well, with this update here, we'll get more Regiment of Renown, so that just means one additional unit for each of the races. That means seven or eight units. Um, but yeah, in addition to that, improved unit formation, skill tree rework. So yeah, specifically with the Astromancer and Alchemist, they have really bare bones skill tree. At level 50, they have like three or four skill points left over because you can get everything, every single one of their mounts, every blue line skill, every one of their spells, and you've still got skills left over. Like the Alchemist and the Astromancer as a hero would have been fine if they were added in Total War Warhammer 1, you know? But in Warhammer 3, those two are so far behind the eight ball, especially when you've got heroes like um, the uh, Plague Ridden, which is really good. They've got unique abilities, like bound spells. They've got a, a, a melee line, multiple mounts. They've got the blue line, obviously, and they've got a spell line. You could easily put 70 points into all of their skills, so you could get an extra skill mod and uh, still not finish them. They're, they're really what the benchmark should be for a hero. It's just inconsistency across the board with um, with various heroes. And especially considering that Cathay kind of doesn't have much going on with their in, like lords and heroes, the fact that they don't have many skills, like an extra melee line would have been really helpful for them. Increasing the frequency of land battles, yeah, obviously, um, because most of the battles you fight will be to capture a settlement, they're mostly going to be minor settlement sieges. And the thing is, that was the case in Warhammer 2, it's just that they were always land battles. And people do get fatigued when playing the minor city battles. I actually like the minor city battles, but they are they do take longer than, uh, than the land battles. So again, it just comes down to what I was talking about before about um, increasing campaign fatigue. The campaign in Warhammer 3 takes longer and rewards you less than in Warhammer 2, and that's not a good thing. You should be going the other way around. It should be like, you should be able to do more in less amount of time and get more out of your time playing it. You got to, Creative Assembly really needs to realize that time is valuable. Stop wasting the player's time, okay? Give them what they want in an acceptable amount of time, okay? Don't worry too much about balance or anything like that shit because it's a single player game, first and foremost. Get people to play the single player game, get them to enjoy it, and then you can focus on balance. Um, you know, obviously multiplayer people will be like, no, no, don't do it that way, play multiplayer first. But look, I'll just be honest with you guys, m most people don't play multiplayer, okay? If you want to save Total War in the long run, you got to fix a single player. Um, you know, Warhammer 3 has a big improvement with multiplayer modes, and it's not being played as much as Warhammer 2. So, you know, evidence speaks for itself. Whatever. Uh, then battle-related fixes, yeah, with a few things here and there. So then we've got the Total War Assembly Kit, um, which will add more modding tools to, to modders, which is, that's definitely good. Now, that won't come in at the same time, I think, as the update, because it's got its own uh, headline there. So if we were to assume that this comes out in sort of chronological order, that one goes first, that's probably July, and then the Assembly Kit is possibly late July, early August. Now, 
this is where we start talking about Immortal Empires. That comes with Update 2.0. Now, Update 2.0 is not going to come out one week or a couple of days after 1.3. It's likely four days, uh, sorry, four weeks, six weeks, something like that. So if this comes out, hypothetically, at the beginning of July, then we can expect 2.0 mid-August. So there's your rough approximate uh, Immortal Empires for the beta. So yeah, here we go. Um... Mortal Empires was a much-loved addition to Total War Warhammer 2, and at Update 2.0 will introduce the first iteration of the game mode to Warhammer 3. Officially known as Immortal Empires, the mode will merge uh, the map and factions from all three Warhammer games, for those who own them, into one, allowing you to deploy the factions you love across the mass battlefield. So yeah, it's not even a finished product. It's just like five or six months after launch. Look, as long as, the, as, as, long as Immortal Empires is good, it doesn't really matter that much if it's 6 months, 12 months, whatever. But fuck me, did they get this shit wrong. Um, because Realm of Chaos... I, I really think that the, they thought the Realm of Chaos was going to be a hit. Despite the fact that all of us in Early Access were like warning them, saying, IT'S SHIT! You know? <laughs> you know, we warned them. We really did. Um, and they just trucked on ahead, thinking that we don't know what we're talking about. And 6 months later, and this is coming out... Because the thing is, with the Vortex campaign, the Vortex campaign wasn't great either, but at least Mortal Empires came out one month after it, so at least you don't have to play the Vortex campaign anymore. But, you know, we got six months of playing stupid Realm of Chaos campaign. Like, I'm sick of it. It's not interesting. Also, none of the updates here are mentioning any improvements to the Realm of Chaos. Like, you've got... That is the biggest fucking problem with the game. And I know that you can download mods to make it go away. But here's the thing. If you, if you use mods to make the Realm of Chaos go away then why not just play Warhammer 2? Because you'll have more factions to play. It just it, Warhammer 3 just doesn't add anything interesting to the mix currently. At least with Immortal Empires, you'll have all of your favorite Legendary Lords for Warhammer 1 and 2, and the ones in 3, all together. So that that will definitely start bringing it together. But yeah, Realm of Chaos is just a... Um, I think it's a lost cause at this point. But anyway... So, update 2.0. We don't have details about what the updates are going to include, but this is this is a pretty meaty one here. Just Immortal Empires on its own. But yeah, it's one that you have to opt into. And also, you have to own all three Warhammer games. You don't have to have them installed. Just keep that in mind. So, if you're currently sitting there with Warhammer 1 and 2 and 3 installed on your computer, thinking you need that for Mortal Empires, you don't. You only need to have Warhammer 3 installed, but you need to own Warhammer 1 and 2. Um, in order to play it. Also, there's I'm gonna try to squash as much misinformation because I've heard a little bit going around. Some people have assumed, based off absolutely no evidence, <laughs> but I have heard it going around, that you'll be able to play Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires if you only own Warhammer 3, but you'll only be able to play the um, Warhammer 3 factions. Not true. Okay, that's not going to be the case. What Creative Assembly wants you to own Warhammer 1, 2, and 3 if you play. If you want to play Immortal Empires. Now, over the next few months, I'll try to see if I can find good deals, whether it be on instant gaming or not, um, for you guys to get Warhammer 1 and 2 as cheap as possible. I do not think that you should have to pay full price for Warhammer 1, 2, or 3. Uh, if you look around in various websites, wherever you feel comfortable with, you can definitely find yourself really good deals where you can get 80 to 50% off. Uh, but find yourself a good deal, because obviously getting the Immortal Empires experience is going to be very expensive. And, you know, Creative Assembly, up until this point, haven't really warranted a whole bunch of, uh, here, just take my money. They, they, I feel like Creative Assembly don't deserve your money right now. That's what I feel like. They owe you a lot of work to make up for what happened with the launch of Warhammer 3. But um, they are going to make you pay for all three games. Just... How much you pay for those games is up to you, uh, what what deals you can find. Anyway, coming with that update as well, we'll come with the Old World update. So the Warriors of Chaos are getting an overhaul, which is good because they really need it. Uh, so it says that they want to make them a more formidable force on the battlefield. But the thing is, they are actually quite strong on the battlefield already. It's they're kind of weak on the campaign map. And um, giving them some campaign mechanics would be good because at the moment they just don't do anything. Now, usually we don't get an Old World update without like a new Lord being introduced. So there's a new Lord pack coming in here. Our first DLC pack also releases alongside update 2.0. Lord packs introduce several new legendary Lords, Lords, heroes, and variety of units to deploy across the grand campaign multiplayer setting. Watch out for more information, including more about the four champions joining the roster as we get closer to its release. Now, 
Very important to, to read the terminology here. Lords are always called legendary lords, but they said here four champions. Okay, we got to be read this as best we can. Um, that doesn't mean four legendary lords. It could mean two legendary lords and two legendary heroes. That's what it could mean. Or it could mean four legendary lords. Um, who knows? But we can safely assume that one of the four, one of the four characters being introduced is going to be a warrior of chaos. If I had to guess, I'd say it's Krom the Conqueror, but again, I don't know. Um, and who the other three are, it could be anyone's guess. Krom the Conqueror could also end up being a bloody legendary hero, who knows. Um, although he, he is definitely a commander of armies, um, so it would make more sense to be a legendary lord. Anyway, you also get the Blood Pack 3, which again, that's another one where I really don't feel like... Like, the Blood Pack is definitely not a heal that I want to die on because I just don't care enough about it. People are, it's, it's just a lost cause. People are going to buy it, right? Because a uh, Total War game without blood just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But um, I think that paying full price for it when the time comes is ridiculous, especially considering the bad faith that Creative Assembly have fostered over the past few months. Um, so again, over the when that does come around, I'll see what deals I can find for you guys to get the blood pack as cheap as possible. But you absolutely should not pay full price for this under any circumstances. Even though it's only going to be like a couple of dollars. Okay, don't encourage Creative Assembly or don't reward them with their bad business practices. We really do need to, like, kind of punish them for what they've done. They need to take a financial hit for it. So find good deals, be... Um, you know, scrutinize what's out there, you know, get the blood pack for Total War Warhammer 1 for like 10 cents if you can, and that way you'll get it for Warhammer 3. Don't pay $5 for this. It's not worth it. It's a bad business practice. I don't encourage it whatsoever, but at the end of the day, it's your money. If you want to give Creative Assembly full price product, that is entirely up to you and I can't stop you. I just don't encourage you to do that because it, it'll make them lazy. Anyway, and that's the uh, that's uh, that's from Q3. Then we go move on to Q4, uh, which is really just sort of um, vague stuff, uh, like update 2.1. It says an update is coming. Cool. That's whatever. Who cares? We don't have any details. We we just know that there's more regiment of renown coming, and then there's the possibility. So they're a bit indecisive here of either a a small update or a big update. Now, a big update will probably mean another Lord Pack, so hopefully we do get 3.0. Um, but as for the deals uh, details on that, we don't know. There's going to be a lot of speculation with all that kind of stuff. And then there's uh, and beyond. So it's too early to talk about 2023, but we can see plenty of projects on the schedule that stretch into 2023 and beyond. Um, don't worry, we'll revisit the timeline several times throughout the year, both to highlight the projects that have been shifted or to add or add it to the schedule. So there's a possibility there's going to be more to this, which is which is good. Here are some more things that they want to focus on. This is all multiplayer focus. Again, this is one of the things I'm just going to gloss over because it just, it just doesn't affect me and I just don't care. Uh, and then there's a the final world word here. Uh, while we've covered a lot today, we want to leave you with one final thought. And you can you can just read this yourself. I'm not going to read it out. But one thing to point out is Richard Aldridge, I think, is the same... DLC game director for Warhammer 2. So this is the guy that did a lot of really good work with Warhammer 2, and this is not the guy responsible for the development of the main game of Warhammer 3. I, I can't remember exactly what that guy's name is, but he probably is moving on to the next project now, that one. Now, in terms of this, I think that the main development team for Warhammer 3 did a fucking terrible job, right? Just, they don't deserve praise. They Whatever, whatever they're doing now, wish them in the best. But man, did they do a shit job. This guy here, at least we know, has done a good job in the past. But he has got a very big task ahead of him. So encourage him as much as possible. And I do wish him the best in the task ahead. Because he's got he's got to fix his previous team's mistakes. And make content uh, moving forward. But yeah, good luck to, to the uh, DLC team for Warhammer 3. Because I, I am rooting for you more than than anyone but at the same time gonna hold you account to a certain level of quality that has to at the very least match what you did in Warhammer 2 you can't fall below that if you fall below that we're gonna kick you in the ass okay so expect criticism if you get if you fall behind that that they eight ball in with that um another thing to keep in mind this is a lot less content than what I was expecting for Warhammer 3 um you know going forward it's mostly just updates which 
I don't think the updates are that interesting, especially since they're not identifying the core issue, which I think Realm of Chaos. Um, it's good that we're getting some regiments of renown as FLC for sure, but um, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it's just a little thing, um, which I appreciate, but still, they, they've got to fix the Realm of Chaos stuff. It's just not fun. Um, but it seems to me that with Warhammer 3, more than with Warhammer 2, that they're running with code that simply is super old, really clunky, and they're having a hard time working with it because these updates are coming in super slow. So it seems like anytime they make any kind of tweak, something else falls down somewhere else. So moving into other projects, you know, Warhammer 40k, Total War, whatever it is that they're working on next, Creative Assembly, you've got to clean up your code. Um, it's not acceptable that there is codes left over from Empire Total War in Total War Warhammer 3 um, that's making it clunky. You, you've reached the limits of what this code can do. You've got to clean it up a bit um, because it's it's creating a mess for you and you're, you're spending way longer than you should on these projects. If you just clean your house a little bit, you'll be able to find the things that you need a lot easier. And I think it'll actually be cheaper and quicker in the long run if you clean things. I, there's probably not much you can do about Warhammer 3. It's, it's essentially a lost cause at this point. But moving into future projects, clean your fucking code up. You know, I don't know what it looks like, but it just, it from an outside perspective, it looks like you've made a mess of it. Because, again, you just build code on code on code on code. This is eventually going to happen. It's a bloody mess. Um, you've got to clean it up a bit. I'm not, I'm not saying you need to get a new engine and start from scratch. But, you know, in the next game, go in and just really give it a good clean. Um, so that the, the next game is a lot, lot fresher. Because uh, Warhammer 3 really feels clunky. Um... I think that's all I've got to say about this. I don't think that this roadmap is going to be very well received by the majority of the community. Don't get me wrong. Some people are going to be like, yay, it's great. I don't mind waiting forever because i got nothing going on with my life sort of thing. Um, but I, I do have stuff going on with my life. And I'm getting very tired of riding around with Total War. Like, I've been waiting and waiting. My life has been on hold for a really long time. And I'm almost done waiting. Like, I'm just going to move on soon because it's just, I'm getting sick of it. Um, so I think if Creative Assembly doesn't, kick into gear they're going to lose a lot of players that want to love this game like i want to love this so much but i can't wait around forever like i'm getting old i just want to do other things with my life i just wanted one more total War warhammer experience and then want to move on but i'm not going to wait around forever and i think they really need to improve their speed with this stuff so i'm not overly impressed with this at all for there to be only one lord pack for the entire year or two possibly is disappointing for immortal empires to be coming in august was extremely disappointing ass assuming that is the case you know I, I would have liked it if it was coming out maybe in june um that that would impress me a lot i guess but you know what can you do uh, that i think they're just really behind they've got a lot of catching up to do so once again this guy here richard aldridge he's got a big task ahead of him i wish him the best if he needs assistance with it in any way I'm more than happy to help, but my advice is to just do what you were doing in Warhammer 2 and do just do more of that because what they planned out for Warhammer 3 isn't working. Just you just do what you were doing in Warhammer 2 and more of that. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight about the roadmap, what, what my thoughts are. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Um, I hope um, we uh, that Total War Warhammer can get into a good state soon because currently it's not. Um, I hope that those of you who are enjoying it continue to enjoy it. And those of you who aren't enjoying Warhammer 3, probably best to find something else to do for a little while because it doesn't seem like there's going to be anything interesting coming for a little bit. I really don't think that this next update, 1.2, is going to be interesting at all. Um, I will i don't really intend to do any more live streams of Warhammer 3 until this update. And even then, I may only do a little bit. I just don't think it's going to do much. So, we're really just waiting for Immortal Empires. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you guys. I hope you're happy and healthy and having fun in whatever it is you're doing. And that we can eventually get the game that we wanted. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you guys. And I'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.